temporary exhibit. You can go see that anytime as well. Oh, that's that. so exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's finally happened. <laughs> Yes. Oh, Sutunder, I think people are actually, we started the webinar. I don't know how that happened. Okay. Um, so Nicole Ranganath just said hi in the chat. So whatever is said now, the attendees can hear. So oh, just that's, a that's fine. warning to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome everyone, whoever's joining us. Uh, we're happy you're here. We're just going to start in a few minutes. Uh, let people join uh, slowly and surely. Um, we have some great guests with us and some great speakers. So it should be a great program. And welcome everyone. If you have any questions or any comments, we would love to see them in the chat. And we, we don't have a Q&A per se, but if there's anything you want to share with us and let us know you're here, that would be lovely as well. And thank you so much for taking an afternoon off wherever you are, whether it's sunny or not, I'm glad that you could join us. Ah, here's Brad. So, Sean, the only person left is Tarek now who hasn't joined yet. I called him. He said he was trying to get in um, and we resent the link. So I'll oh. keep following up. OK. Hello, Brad. Good afternoon. Good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Very happy to be here. Thank you, Brad. We're going to start around 4.01. Yeah, Tariq is here, but we can't see. No, I think he joined as an attendee when he should have been in as a panelist. So I'll work on it in the background. <laughs> okay. Ah, here we are. Sean, do you see attendees then joining? Oh, good. Lots of participants. Uh, well, we're going to start just so, so that we can't be told that we run on Indian Standard Time. We're going to start on Canadian Standard Time. Uh, uh, thank you, everyone. Welcome. Uh, my name is Satwinder Baines, and I'm the director of the South Asian Studies Institute at the University of the Fraser Valley in beautiful Abbotsford, BC. A warm spring welcome to all of you. Thank you for joining us. As part of the Zoom protocols, uh, those on the screen, please mute yourself while others are talking and do come on when it's your time to speak. I would like to begin by acknowledging that we are fortunate to be gathering on the ancestral and unceded territory of the Stolo Nation, the people of the river. And we acknowledge our neighbors, the Sumath and the Kwantlen First Nations. Uh, we work all the time to understand our role in the displacement of Indigenous peoples and to find truth and reconciliation for our past histories and make better histories in the future. All the staff at SASE at the South Asian Studies Institute and I would like to welcome you all to the Komagata Maru Discrimination Meets Determination Exhibit virtual launch, something we are doing for the very first time. Most of our launches are in person. The exhibit is situated at the National Historic Site Sikh Heritage Museum that is managed by the Khalsa Dewan Society of Abbotsford. It's the oldest South Asian organization in North America. The National Historic Site is the oldest standing Gurdwara in the Western Hemisphere and the only one with a national and provincial designation of historic significance, something in Abbotsford that we are very proud of. Since 2011, we've had one or more exhibits uh, with the support of the Castle of the One Society Abbotsford. And we encourage you to visit the site any day of the week. Uh, there is a permanent display on the grounds of the exhibit and a temporary one that runs for this whole year inside the Sikh Heritage Museum. We'd like to acknowledge our partnership with the REACH galleries, especially Chris Folds, uh, who are committed to partnering with us on our continued work. We, of course, cannot do this without the support of many of our partners and friends and colleagues, so we thank them very much. Uh, I'd like to give thanks to our funders, 
Uh, we had funding from the Vancouver Heritage Foundation's Joseph Wask Publication Fund. And with us is Jessica Kwan, who is attending, and she's the program manager who so kindly shepherded our grant. Thank you, Jessica. A catalog of the exhibit will be available to everyone to get a copy after this event. Uh, BC Arts Council, the infrastructure grant. Uh, we also got one from the BC government and with us are Anissa Paulson and Sarah Todd, who assisted us with the granting processes and the outcomes. The infrastructure grant helped us install the exhibit and that was a great gift to us. Uh, we wanna thank the two just Jusses, the electrician and the fabricator, who were amazing to work with. We could not have done this without your support, and we thank you very much. Uh, we want to thank the Vancouver Maritime Museum, uh, curator Duncan McCloyd, who you see on the screen, educator Kanjan Lal, who is helping us from the background, uh, and Melanie and Jonathan, who helped us with the marketing and tech. Uh, the exhibit is the 2014 exhibit held at the centenary of the KGM in, in 2014 at the VMM. Thank you to the VMM for helping us put, to this, put this together at the Khalsa Diwan Society Gursik Temple and for a most beautifully curated exhibit, which I know you will all enjoy. Uh, Vicky Tran and Ria Kabagauchi, who designed the beautiful catalog. And you know what? They spent endless hours with us on each and every single detail. And the end product is a beautiful memento of this important event that we will share with you. Uh, Raghav Modgil, who is our very own UFE alumni graphic designer, who worked with us on this new and a new design, a bilingual exhibit. And great work, Raghav, you did for us. Thank you. Uh, Sharn, who, who co curates all the exhibits with me, and Kusum, who put in countless mm -hmm. hours of meticulous and beautiful translation in Punjabi to make the exhibit that much richer by being bilingual. I want to acknowledge the month of April. It is a very special month for so many of us who celebrate and commemorate different faiths and cultures. Uh, here in our midst, we have Visakhi. So, lak lak vidanya Visakhi diya. Uh, it's Dr. Ambedkar's Remembrance Day, his 130th birthday. May the spirit of his social justice uh, work reside in all of us. Uh, Ramzan Mubarak to all our friends and family. Uh, Navratri Kushiyan to everyone. And we wish everyone a grand new year for Ogari. And today we stand in solidarity for the farmers movement that is unfolding in India. The South Asian Canadian diaspora response is both emotional and passionate. And we stand by our statements and actions of solidarity. We have some great dignitaries here with us today. Uh, we have Mayor Braun, Emily Mike DeYoung, MP Brad Viss, uh, Councillors Patricia Ross, Dave Lowen and Kelly Chahal are here with us today. And thank you all for joining us. We also have some great speakers. Uh, Duncan McCloyd, uh, Tarek, Tarek Malik, Suki Kuman, Raj Thur, Sharanjit Sandra, and Kusum Soni. Thank you for sharing your goodwill, your poetry, your life experiences, and your stories. So you might ask why in 2014 are we still talking about the Kumagara Maru in 2021, and why the story still matters. So this is a story of a Japanese steamship, a Hindu, Sikh, and Muslim British subjects traveling from India to Hong Kong via Japan to Vancouver, setting sails to sail to challenge racist practices on Canadian soil. In 1908, Canada legislated that immigrants must come on a continuous passage from their country of origin. Canada had effectively created a racist law without once mentioning race, but knowing full well that a continuous journey was impossible from certain parts of the world, namely South Asia, the country Canada that was being formed would continue its white Canada forever colonization mission. The Komagara Maru set sail to challenge this law in 1914. So why are we commemorating Komagara Maru here in Abbotsford by dedicating a permanent exhibit at the Sikh Heritage Museum? Because if we were standing in the National Historic Site right now, we would almost certainly surely hear the voices and the impassioned speeches from our elders to the congregation of a few hundred men to gather and lend support to weary and beleaguered would-be immigrants in, sitting in Burrard Inlet for two months. Those were very difficult times, but at a dollar an hour, men found the courage to donate a huge sum of $3,000 to lawyers to fight the good fight in Canadian courts. As we know, these and all other efforts at diplomacy, appeal, 
and outright indign indignation at the discrimination were met with cold, unfeeling, and no resolve by the government of Canada, the media, and the public. The theme of the exhibit is that of resilience and courage in the face of much adversity. This exhibit reflects our collective history. It's both the good, the bad, the ugly, and the indifferent. It is there for us to study, to understand, and to reconcile to the truth. The permanent exhibit at the temple is there so that we, so that we can create the correct Canadian record and mark the space where injustice was questioned. We also want to acknowledge that settlers at the time knew very little or nothing of the displacement of indigenous peoples of Canada, even as they arrived and did the same thing. It is time for us to apologize for our role in displacing indigenous peoples at the time and to commit to solidarity with their current rights-based efforts. Today is even more fitting because it is Visakhi and it is a time for us to re reflect upon our past and to commit to fighting all kinds of discrimination in our communities. We must not think for a moment that the war against racism has been fought and won. The pandemic has revealed that people in our midst, in our province, still harbor hatred against those that they consider undesirable. Racism is on the rise. Right-wing elements are bolder than ever. There is, no in, there is intolerance in our neighborhoods. We are undoing the work of so many for so long, but we must never give up the good fight. Today, we stand on the shoulders of giants who have paved the way for us with their toil, their blood, their sweat, and their tears. This exhibit reminds us of that unfinished journey for 376 men 107 years ago. In 2014, the Vancouver Maritime Museum created a beautiful exhibit that they have so graciously donated now to the Sikh Heritage Museum for a permanent exhibit. We thank them for their generosity of spirit and collaboration with us. I welcome Duncan McCloyd, who's the curator at the Vancouver Maritime Museum to say a few words on behalf of the VMM. Thank you, Sitwinder. Uh, that was uh, a wonderful introduction to this, this topic and thank you for uh, letting me participate today. The, the Vancouver Maritime Museum is, is honored to, to work with uh, the South Asian Studies Institute, with yourself, with Shanjit, uh, with Kusum. It's been a wonderful process uh, to see the exhibition that so much work went into um, by the original curators, and the designers, uh, Ria and Vicky, and to see that have a new life, a new continued legacy uh, is, is really fulfilling uh, as an institution. And it means a lot because this partnership also is meaningful for the museum to take steps towards decolonization, towards reaching out to new communities that traditionally have not been well represented by institutions like ours. And so we thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Duncan. Uh, tomorrow at the VMM, they will also host a virtual launch at 7 p.m. with a keynote uh, from, by a good friend and esteemed scholar, Dr. Renisa Mewani of UBC, and is an event worthy of our time. So thank you for doing that as well, Duncan. And truly, I mean it, thank you for your goodwill with us. Um, because we could not have the exhibit, we would like to share a three minute slideshow of the exhibit before I ask the dignitaries to say a few words. Let's hope it works. So Sharon, you can run the slideshow. It's always technical. Ah, here we are.
You're on mute, Satunder. Yeah, sorry. Thank you for that, Sean. After I tell everybody not to do that, I go and do that. Sorry about that. Um, so at the very last uh, few slides, you saw the exhibit as it is. So we really encourage you to go and see the exhibit, please, when you have a moment and you visit Abbotsford or if you live in Abbotsford, we'd love to host you. I hope after the pandemic, we can gather and uh, pay tribute to the Komagata Maru in, in a fitting way. I'm going to ask Mayor Braun to say a few words in a minute. Uh, just introduce him for you, for those who don't know Mayor Braun. He's been an Abbotsford resident for practically his entire life. And he was the co-owner and president CEO of Abbotsford-based Pacific Northern Rail Contractors Corporation until his retirement in 2003. He never really retired. He came out and ran for politics. He first got elected uh, as council member with the city of Abbotsford in 2011. And in November 2014, he was elected to serve as his first term as mayor. And in October 2018, for his second term. Henry is a champion for the city of Abbotsford and his family is his inspiration for making sure Abbotsford remains a wonderful place in which to grow up and grow old well into the future. Welcome Mayor Braun, thank you for saying a few words. Thank you Satwinder for those kind words. MP uh, Viss, MLA Michael De Jong, members of council, honored guests, family and friends, good afternoon. It is an honor to be here virtually today, along with Councillor Sandy Blue, Kelly Shahal, Patricia Ross, and Dave Lowen, to bring greetings on behalf of Abbotsford City Council. Okay, I've lost my, hmm. uh, there we go. I lost my screen there for a minute. Uh -huh. uh, to bring greetings on behalf of Abbotsford City Council, and to also have this opportunity to wish everyone a very joyous Vasaki. Abbotsford City Council is proud of our community's diverse heritage and we are pleased to be part of this virtual launch of the permanent outdoor exhibit, Kumagata Maru, Discrimination Meets Determination, that pays homage to the Kumagata Maru tragedy of 1914. This exhibition will serve as an ongoing reminder of the tragic story of the Kumagata Maru. One of several incidents in the 20th century involving exclusion laws in both Canada and the United States. It will also serve as a reminder that we are continuing to build a stronger society and design more inclusive and complete communities for all of our residents. I am proud of our city, our province and our country. As Canadians, we not only accept diversity, we embrace it as part of the fabric of our nation and as a part of who we are as citizens of the world. Abbotsford is the third most diverse city in Canada, and we should all be proud of this fact and what it means for us as a community of choice for many. Sharing our cultural experiences through recognition of our heritage will only continue to strengthen our community and showcase our city as an inclusive and welcoming place for visitors and residents alike. For us, community means a wide variety of cultural events, it means an open and understanding and awareness of many cultural traditions and religions. It means learning from one another and embracing our differences. On behalf of the city of Abbotsford, thank you to all of the sponsors and in particular, the South Asian Studies Institute at UFV for your continued commitment to building a stronger community through highlighting the significance of racial injustice and the importance of heritage preservation in Abbotsford. The conversations that will be initiated and carried on as a result of this exhibit, the importance of telling and retelling the stories of those impacted are not to be forgotten. As Mr. Tour has shared with council and I'm quoting him, we can't undo the past. We can move forward and leave it as a legacy for future generations by educating them about the past. Again, Thank you for the opportunity to participate virtually this afternoon, and I look forward to the time when we can step away from our computers and once again step toward each other as we gather in person for conversations and celebrations. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Braun. Uh, thank you. I do agree with you that Abbotsford is a learning community and that we have these opportunities to talk with each other, conversate as well as educate each other. So thank you for that resounding message. Uh, I'm going to introduce a good friend, uh, Michael DeYoung. Uh, Mike has been a MLA for Abbotsford West for 27 years. Yay, Mike. Uh, an area that he has represented since 1994. 
Um, this, uh, the seven term MLA has previously served as Minister of Finance, Minister of Health, Attorney General, Minister of Aboriginal Relations and Reconciliation, Minister of Labor and Citizen Services, and Minister of Forests. He served as government house leader, then opposition house leader from 2009 to 2018. Before his election as a member of the Legislative Assembly in 1994, Mike had served two terms as an elected school trustee for Abbotsford, and he was a practicing lawyer with his own firm. In 2008, Mike rose in the legislature and read the provincial apology for the treatment by the province of the Komagatamru passengers. He then personally donated a beautifully calligra beautiful calligraphy of the apology, which now hangs in the National Historic Site. Thank you, Mike, from all of us. So, Linda, thank you, and uh, your worship, members of council, um, MP Brad, uh, and all of the uh, panelists and those uh, gathered. Thank you for taking time to to join with us uh, through the uh, miracle of technology that we were obliged to use. Uh, look, I think. Oh, uh, happy Visaki and happy Sikh Heritage Month, uh, which we are also uh, celebrating uh, over the course of the month. I think when I look at everyone that's participating today, we all know the story, the, uh, the, the tragic story. I'm not even sure that word tragedy is, I always think of tragedies as natural disasters beyond our control. And of course, this was an injustice very much uh, within the control uh, of people and happened because of the actions of of people. And I said before we went on the air, one of the really powerful things about the display and uh, thank you to uh, Duncan and the uh, Maritime Museum for the contribution of the, uh, the display is the photographs now because they've been enhanced are, are of such good quality, you can actually look into the eyes uh, of the people's as they stand on the boat and and maybe better imagine what they must have been thinking after two months on the on the high seas and on a boat that wasn't that big uh, bouncing across the uh, the Pacific and then to to come into to Coal Harbor to come into the same place we go to now to have a glass of wine or sit back or walk along the waterfront and be told you're not welcome. To, to be rejected, turned back. That's the very human dimension uh, to this story and, and probably the most you know, important of all. And when you consider that that last picture that Setwinder showed us of the Komagata Maru uh, leaving in July of 1914, and the story remained untold for many, many years, in part because less than a month later, the guns of August erupted and the world was at war. And of course, what's really ironic is that the people who were not deemed fit to be welcomed onto our shores were deemed very fit to stand side by side with Canadians in the trenches in the fields of Flanders. And did so, uh, hundreds of thousands. So that's in and of itself an important reason, I think, for us to, to remember and, and commemorate and ensure that future generations understand what happens, but what happened. But there is another thing that has increasingly been on my mind, and maybe the panelists who are engaged in the discussion will will comment. But you know, there is an aspect of this injustice that is still with us. And that is the tendency we continue to have as a society when confronted by challenge to point the finger at foreigners or those perceived to be foreigners. 1914, uh, Vancouver uh, suffered uh, all of the challenges associated with growth, um, housing availability shortages, some of the problems that we are familiar with today. And so when I hear the kind of commentary that um, we are 
inclined to hear today about who's to blame for that, I get worried. And that is surely another reason for us to uh, look into the mirror of history and remember uh, what took place to those, uh, those people, those folks who, uh, who were turned away and met another kind of tragedy, many of them, uh, when they returned to the shores of, uh, of India. Uh, thank you, all of you, for the uh, opportunity to be here with you, Seth Winder, as always, to the, uh, you and your team uh, at the Centre who do such uh, wonderful work. And I'm uh, looking forward to hearing uh, the, uh, the conversation and the rest of the panelists. Thank you, Mike. And thank you for so poignantly bringing out the human dimension of our histories and uh, not let, hoping that they will not be repeated. Uh, I know with all the dignities that I hear, Brad, uh, Mayor Braun, and Mike, that you know we hold uh, you uh, in in our in our hearts and in our minds to ensure that the human dimensions of our stories are in the enacted in the legislation that comes out in Canada, and that you know you hear our voices and you carry them with you to your seats of power. Um, thank you for that, Mike. Uh, Brad, welcome. Uh, this is uh, the first time we're having Brad with us uh, at an exhibit launch. Uh, Brad was born in Matsqui in British Columbia and has deep roots in the Fraser Valley. Uh, he has spent the majority of his career working in government, politics, and the agribusiness sector. He was elected in 2019, and Brad is honored to represent all the residents of Mission, Matsqui, Fraser Canyon, and is happy to work hard on their behalf. And we can attest to that. Thank you, Brad, for all that you do in, the, in, in Ottawa and in the community. Uh, Brad serves as the Shadow Minister for, the, for Housing and is a member of the Standing Committee on Human Resources, Skills and Social Development and the Status of Persons with Disabilities. Uh, thank you, Brad, for joining us today. Would you say a few words? Oh, thank you, Dr. Baines. It's a real pleasure to be here today. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, to my colleagues, Mayor Braun, MLA de Young, and Abbotsford City Council. Nice to see you virtually. Um, I'm, for those of you who don't know me, I am Brad Viss, Member of Parliament for Mission Matsui Fraser Canyon. And um, I'm so thankful that the South Asians. South Asian Studies Institute at the University of the Fraser Valley uh, for hosting this event. And it's an honor to be here. Uh, growing up in Abbotsford, I have long heard from friends about the Komogata Maru incident and how it impacted their family for generations. Upon being invited to provide a few remarks today, I reached out to various members of the Punjabi community and they shared that this was a particularly difficult time in our history due to the discriminatory practices of the Canadian government in the early 20th century. They spoke of the consequences of this incident that led to 19 passengers up aboard that ship being killed and hundreds of people being persecuted by the British government in India after being denied entry by the Canadian government. I'm so thankful that our government made an official apology, recognizing the terrible impact such discriminatory policies have had, and that we're taking steps towards reconciliation, sort of like this event today. Tragically, we can never make up for the lives lost, but we can and must learn to never repeat it again. While racism still exists today, we see a greater movement to stop it. Schools, workplaces, our places of worship, are all speaking out against racism more than ever before. We have a lot to learn from one another. The Komogata Maru serves as a reminder of how everyone loses when we discriminate. History has shown our resiliency as Canadians of all colors continues to work together to combat racism and build a better future. Let us never forget for the lives lost and lessons learned from the Komogata Maru. Again, a real honor to be here today. Uh, thank you for the invite and I look forward to hearing from the other panelists. Thank you, Brad. And thank you for speaking on our behalf on the farmers movement in Ottawa. Appreciate it. Um, so uh, this, I'm gonna ask Raj through to say a few words. No, everybody knows Raj. Raj was born in Perni, Arya village in Ludhiana in the district of, in the Ludhiana district of Punjab. He came to Canada in 1983 and has been living in Surrey. He's the vice president spokesperson for the descendants of the nonprofit Komagata Maru Society. His grandfather was one of the 376 passengers who came to Vancouver on board the Komagata Maru. He was coming to Canada to further his education. He believed that a better education, a better educated public 
and government would help ensure that there was less suffering in this world as people can see the damage that racism inflicts on all of us. Raj takes his grandfather's words to heart and is working to leave a legacy for future generations by educating them about the past. Raj is gonna speak both in English and in Punjabi um, as a fitting uh, tribute to his grandfather. Hello, uh, good afternoon, everybody here. And uh, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to the uh, Sitwinder Bay and Sarji Sandor and uh, uh, University of Fraser Valley and also the Bank of Heritage Foundation VC Art Council uh, for launching the uh, Kamaga Tomaru Challenging Injustice Exhibit. And it's a, a great learning tool to the Canadians to, to connect their history. Uh, and also, uh, I would like to uh, say thank you to the uh, Mayor Brown and the Abbotsford City Council for supporting my request to create a meaningful educational way to commemorate the Kamagata Maru incident in Abbotsford. Uh, I'm pleased with the thoughtful manner that Ms. Federspil and Ms. Gonzalez prepared their report to Council and I'm looking forward to working with the city, the South East Institute, the Abbotsport Culture of the One Society and Heritage Abbotsport in helping to create a lasting memorial to the Kamaga Tamaru that will make our community more tolerant and accepting. And uh, my grandfather, he came in the uh, Kamagata Maru ship and uh, he used, I was seven to eight years, he used to tell me all his stories when they arrived over here and the Canadian government denied uh, uh, the no food, no water, no medication was provided by the government. And uh, even the local South Coast community, they provide the passengers with food and water and medications. Sometimes uh, they have to stay more than 24 hours, uh, two, three days without food, water. Uh, uh, and uh, 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 so uh, because it was restricted by the Canadian government to assign the South Coast community to the ship. And um, uh, so they had a very, very hard, hard times and uh, the, uh, the, the, they were thirsty, they were, uh, they were hungry, they had a very, very hard time. So Kamagata Maru sent up to two months under the shadow of a military ship uh, uh, by discriminatory law uh, uh, to the India. When they arrived there, British were ruling India at that time. So 20s were killed on spot, many were injured, the rest of them they put in jail for a long period of time, including my grandfather. So 1968, uh, my uncle tried to sponsor my grandfather. He refused to come here. And he said, I have a painful memory with Canada. I will not go there. But uh, South Asian community will go there one day and they will live very peacefully, happily uh, life over there. And uh, today we can see what came to. And uh, uh, South Asian community is living very peacefully uh, and uh, happily life over here. And uh, uh, more than 15 years, uh, the Center of the Kamagata Maru Society uh, uh, lobby for the apology from the BC government, federal government, 2008, the BC government did apologize for this incident. Also the 2016, uh, federal government did apologize for this incident, uh, uh, for this act of discrimination. Both the government committed to learn from the mistakes of the past to ensure they would not, never be repeated again. And uh, July, uh, in, uh, after that, uh, June 2010, the city, uh, Bank of the City did uh, apologize for their role in the Kamagata Maru incident on behalf of the descendants of the Kamagata Maru society request. And the city of uh, Sari, uh, uh, behalf of my, uh, my request, city of Sari did rename the one of the streets, 75A Avenue to the Kamagata Maru Bay. Also, a storyboard in R. Nicholson Park. And also, city of Delta, on my request, they did uh, also uh, interpretive sign about the Kamagata Maru story in the social. North Delta Social Heart Plaza. And uh, uh, last month, a uh, new Westminster uh, uh, Council, uh, on my request, they did uh, Q2Q ferry docks. And also, uh, there is a, uh, uh, one trail on the rename on the Kamagata Maru in memory of the Kamagata Maru passengers. And uh, the, it's a, the, uh, this, is a, uh, this is the way uh, we, uh, we, can, we can't undo the past, but we can move forward and uh, leave a legacy for the future generations by educating them about the past. Uh, uh, and also I'd like to say thank you very much uh, uh, to everybody, uh, Mayor, Mayor uh, Henry Brown, Mike Dijon, uh, MP uh, Brad Bist, everybody uh, participate uh, in the, this program. And also I'd uh, like to say thank you again to give me a time uh, to share my view. Thank you. Thank you, Raj. I can imagine as a seven-year-old hearing the stories 
um, and bringing them with you to Canada and then doing something about them. So we are in your debt for doing this hard work uh, of, re of recognition in the cities that you have mentioned and the continuing work that you're doing. Uh, the you. legacy you leave in your grandfather's spirit. Thank you, Raj. I think Thank Raj you. forgot his Punjabi in the meantime. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to go to Tariq Malik, a good friend of ours. Uh, uh, he's going to read a, po a poem. Uh, Tariq is an author, a poet, and a painter. Uh, and he's a unique voice in Canadian literature who combines both his immigrant past with Canadian society's current social realities. He has created a sentient place for himself with his first two books, Rain Songs of Kotli and Chanting Denied Shores. His poetry has recently been published as part of a book that we co-wrote called Unmooring the Komagata Maru, Charting Colonial T Trajectories. Uh, his poem, The Sea Lion, Still Running in History, is taken from his debut poetry collection called Knights of Kleptomania. Tariq's art and fiction focuses on the Pacific Northwest and its intersection with historical colonial India in general and the province of Punjab in particular. Uh, Tariq, we welcome you as always. You're still muted. Unmute, yes. There we go. Okay, thank you for this opportunity, both the museum and Sassi and the participants. Um, I also want to note that April is also a poetry month. Um, I encountered the sea lion. I was actually stumbled upon it on a visit to the Maritime Museum about five years ago, and I couldn't believe that uh, it was anchored there. So this poem came about as a result of that, of my reaction to it. The sea lion still running on history. In marking the five generation deep origins of our people, we repeat only two stories, one of banishment from paradise and the other of a vessel denied every beckoning shore. Landlocked Punjabis have always been bound by sweet waters and unable to swim across brines. They must rely on singular leaps of faith to cross the widest of chasms. This one time, unyoked from their oxen, they leaped across the darkest Kalapani, wider than any river in flood and further than any living memory of water until it came time for them to set foot on land again. Today, where minnows stipple the water's surface, an anchored rust bucket was held captive for 60 days and nights. Their chants have long since been silenced, their demands diminished, and this water holds no memory and no echo. The waiting, the ringing of the hand, the shouting has all fallen silent. Yet this is still a crime scene and the culprit is still at large. A century of lapping waves on your veneered cladding of cedar means you're none the worse for it. Your brass furnishings glint flawlessly in the sun. That signature steam whistle with which you menaced us so long ago has long been muted and the roving eye of the searchlight that kept us awake for 60 nights has gone missing. The shattered glass panes have been refitted. The decks scrubbed clean of spilled blood the water cleared of bobbing police helmets and the lobbed cabbage head, once mistaken for, ex for an explosive, has long since vanished into the depths. The bunker bricks, the Japanese coal, the hand whittled missives hewed from burad flotsam are nowhere in sight. Moored securely to this sheltered and peaceable shore, you float ethereally sparkling in this April sunlight. The gently heaving and falling of your prow, attesting to your lone survival in our midst, in, in awaiting indifferent paying customers. But like me, you're still running on history and your quaint presence in our midst rankles. And I recoil inwardly 
the hurt has not yet fully healed and only you can reconcile this century old rift in our interrupted journey. I remain stranded in this body of water, suspended in time and history, still pining for that denied shore. Come and fetch me. Thank you. Thank you, Tariq. Beautifully said. Uh, we would have to spend some time reading and rereading your poetry. So perhaps we will share it with the participants who are here and they can spend some time really understanding and deeply engaging with the words. Uh, thank you for consistently being that voice for us that we can go to when we need that emotional sucker to keep our, our energy up. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, I love the idea of water holding no memory. Uh, water keeps moving, but we have to remember. So thank you, Tariq. Uh, next is a conversation with Sharanjit Sandra, who is the coordinator at SASI and is my uh, co-conspirator, co-friend, co-colleague, whatever you want, co-friend, whatever we want to call it. Uh, Sean is completing her PhD at UBC and is a social justice advocate in our communities as well. She's going to be speaking with Suki Kuman. Uh, Suki is a marketing professional and has worked at UBC for 10 years as a manager of marketing and events. She's also the co-founder and managing director of an organization called Be Your Own Best Friend. It's a network that was established in 2012 to empower and celebrate South Asian Canadian women. Suki is also a lifestyle photographer and a mother of two young boys. Uh, Suki's great grandfather, Harnam Singh, was a passenger on the Komagata Maru. So I hand it over to Suki and to uh, Sharn. Thanks, Satunder. Thank you, Suki, for joining us today. Uh, we know you're, you're a very busy woman, mother, professional, so we appreciate the time as always. Um, I think Satunder and I kind of envisioned a, a, a conversation, um, which I think is a nice way for people to hear your story. Um, so I've got a couple of questions and um, hopefully that'll uh, give people an opportunity to learn a little bit about you. Not many people in the audience, I think, will know your story. So I think our first question really is um, for you to share your family story and your family connection to the Kamagata Maru. And um, yeah, let's start off there. Sure. I'll start off by showing you a picture um, of my great grandfather. Um, so this is Harnam Singh Sohi. He was my great grandfather, and he was one of the passengers um, on the Kamagata Maru. So for two months, my great grandfather and his fellow passengers were denied food and water, and their requests to officials were repeatedly ignored. Provisions were minimal, and passengers were living meal to meal. <clears throat> But upon returning to Calcutta, 19 passengers were killed and many others were imprisoned. Fortunately, Harnam Singh safely returned to his village in Punjab, <clears throat> sorry, unharmed. But the internal wounds he experienced abroad the Kamagata Maru stayed with him forever. Like many of his passengers, Harnam Singh sought to, sought to come to Canada for an opportunity to work and to provide for his family with a better life. And even though Harnam Singh experienced the tragedy directly, including the poor conditions on the ship and the open fire upon returning to India, he never faltered from his dream to bring his family to Canada. Similar to Mr. Raj Tour's uh, grandfather, my great-grandfather Harnam Singh also ref refused to return to Canada, but was able to secure his daughter's marriage, Gurnam Kaur, to Ratan Singh Guman, my grandfather a man who had already settled in Canada. Ratan Singh's father, Daya Singh Guman, my other great-grandfather, was one of the fortunate six that immigrated to Canada in 1906 and worked in the Fraser Mills. Through this marriage, Gurnam Gore was able to sponsor her siblings and their families to Canada. Thank you, Suki. Um, yeah, there's many parallels, I think, between yours and Raj's family stories as well, which is so important. I think the second question really is about, um, and Mike mentioned this in his speech as well, it's that connection between the past, because often when talking about the Kamagata Maru story, it's kind of stuck as in like a time capsule, something that happened in 1914, and there's no thread to, to things that we see today. Um, so our second question really is, how do you see 
the impact of the story of the Komagata Maru in the moment we are living in. So why does it matter? Why, why is it so important that we continue to bring these histories and stories into the present moment? Yeah, I definitely feel it's important that, you know, this history be taught in relation to the present moment because all Canadians were directly effect affected by the Kamagata Maru when it was turned away. It's not just a South Asian story, but one that affects our entire nation. Vulnerable communities today continue to face exclusion, discrimination, and racism in Canada at the hands of our federal and provincial governments. And as a nation, we need to stand up for those seeking asylum in Canada, temporary foreign workers, immigrants, and migrant communities. These people today are also seeking freedom and opportunities similar to those 376 passengers that were abroad the Kamagata Maru in 1914. And even though that took place over a hundred years ago, we still need to fight systemic racism and build a more just and inclusive environment. You know, many activists and educators as yourselves and scholars, especially others from, especially from the indigenous, black and people of color communities, they have been tirelessly fighting against colonial oppressions and racial injustices for generations. And in 2020, with this current COVID-19 pandemic, the crisis paired with systemic racism has highlighted by the murders of George Floyd and numerous others. And many are now waking up to the significance and deep rootedness of the issues that these predecessors have been raising. You know, as individuals, we are being challenged more than ever to reflect, to unlearn, to look inward and to imagine new ways to actively in generate change. And I strongly feel that as we need to come together as a nation and develop an action plan to counter intolerance, you know, our government should take urgent steps to prevent racism and xenophobic violence and discrimination. And, you know, we need to continue to expand public outreach, promote tolerance and counter hate speech while, uh, while aggressively prosecuting hate crimes. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, you kind of hit the nail on the head with that answer. Thank you, Zaki. Um, so those are the questions I had, but maybe I'll give you an opportunity to say the last few words about um, what maybe your vision is, you know, and, and doing this sort of museum work and, and artistic work around histories? And, and what do you hope that people will, or how people will engage with our exhibit that's at the Sikh Heritage Museum, permanently outside and temporarily for a year in the museum? So what are your hopes for the work and the engagement? You know, I truly feel that the work, the, the exhibit um, and the Kamagata Maru for our community, it's symbolic. It's symbolic of discrimination and it's symbolic of advocacy. It represents how the community rallied together to challenge injustices, but it's still, it's still, you know, it's, it's still, there's still so much more work that needs to be done for our community as well as for Black, Indigenous, and people of color communities. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we need plans that lay out specific approaches to combat racism and discrimination. And as I mentioned, prosecution of hate crimes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even just earlier today, I was watching the news and I saw a young nine-year-old girl who was, you know, wearing a hijab who was shopping at Superstore in Surrey. Um, who was called a racist by a man. And I'm sure you'll see this on the news tonight because it just happened, it just came up, the story just came out. But just hearing that, it truly broke my heart that, you know, I think we're, we're living in this multicultural society and, and I, you know, I'd like to think that we also compassion and empathy and respect for one another. But the fact that people still have the audacity to, to say these racist, racist remarks and let alone to a young child, and as a mother, as a mother of two young boys of color, I, I, like, I feel there is still so much more work that needs to be done. I, I want to ensure that we have a safe place for our future generations. And it's only gonna happen when we, when we hold these people accountable so that they realize it's not okay um, to do this. Great, well, Suki, so we're so grateful for your work in our community uh, and, and your advocacy and, and the historical connections you bring to every conversation. So thank you so much. And with that, I'll pass it on to Satundra for the next presenter.
Thank you. Uh, we have one last presenter. Uh, thank you also from my side, Suki and Sharn, for sharing uh, both your thoughts and your vision. Uh, we have three uh, levels of government with us today. And, uh, you know, the appeal to you is to uh, look at building uh, inclusive communities in a very practical, very applied manner, uh, and to take these messages uh, to Victoria, to Ottawa, and to the city of Abbotsford uh, to really engage and create inclus inclusion for people. Uh, there are anti-racist policies and multiculturalism policies, but what we need is action plans. We need inclusion as part of our thinking, as part of our daily activities, as part of our accountability to each other. So thank you, Suki, for um, sharing that clarion call for us. Uh, we have some great um, represent representatives in our local communities that we can lean on and uh, speak with, as uh, all three have said, around education and building capacity within with each other on the human dimensions. Uh, so thank you for that. We have a po poem at the very end as well. Uh, we really want to honor the artistic form of uh, telling stories through poetry uh, in the Gadar movement, as well as the Kumagata Maruv movement was shared through poetry with us uh, in Punjabi. So we have Dr. Kusum Soni, who is going to read in Punjabi, the language of the Kumagata Maru passengers. Uh, Dr. Kusum Soni is the coordinator here at the South Asian Studies Institute, along with Sean and myself, and she will read a short poem. Kusum has been engaged in multicultural programming and immigrant integration services through educating immigrants and other visible minority and vulnerable populations on building positive attitudes, uh, settlement uh, issues, uh, social integration, and healthy living in Canada. She is also a prolific poet. Uh, so Kusum, uh, please join us. Thank you, Satvinder. Uh, I don't know how I decided to recite my poem in Punjabi. I think while doing the translations for the work, uh, this all these words uh, naturally uh, came to my mind and it became a poem. <laughs> I didn't have to make any effort to make it a poem. Uh, maybe those who can't understand uh, Punjabi, maybe try to uh, read it my, through my body language or later on i translate it into english for you okay and send it through email mm -hmm. uh, does that work yes uh, i'll thank you uh, so the title of our exhibition is uh, challenging injustice and uh, which means in punjabi bain safi nu chunauti and uh, it all revolved around uh, racism so nasalwad da chidiya kar Bain Safi nu chunauti nasal vaad da chidiya kar. Nasal vaad de chidiya kar vich paant paant de pinjare ne. Jis vich rende ne kaale chitte kank pinne te mitti range. Pinne nak te chunniya akha wale paant paant te janwar nahi. Par manas jat. Har mulk vich ne eddaan de chidiya kar. Te pinjare kadan wale kalakar. Jo karde ne man sik hatya da karo bar. Par inna sabdi rani hai ik. Gori chitti chamdi wali nasal vaad di maa kehlawe. Idda dehi ik pinjare vich mein bhi rendi. Idda dehi ik pinjare vich mein bhi rendi. Khand penna no sab hai milda. Fher bhi kyo hai damja kutda. Khand penna no sab hai milda. Fher bhi kyo hai damja kutda. मेरे पुरखे दस देने एक सदी पहला एक जापानी पंडुब्बी सी आई कामा गाटा मारु नासी उठता मेरे वर्गी नसल दे उसने जी सीटो ए पगड़िया टोपियां वाले कणक पिन्ने जाए पले मानस इंसान जे धर्म छाप नु वेखिए ता ओ सन सिख हिंदू ते मुसलमान ਰਾਣੀ ਹੁਕਮ ਚਲਾਵੇ ਬੈਠੀ ਸੱਤ ਸਮੁੰਦਰੋਂ ਪਾਰ ਨਸਲਵਾਦ ਦਾ ਬੁਣਿਆ ਸੀ ਜਿਸ ਨੇ ਇੱਕ ਘਾਤਕ ਜੰਜਾਲ ਵੈਨਕੂਵਰ ਦੇ ਪੋਰਟ ਤੇ ਲਿਆ ਪੰਡੁੱਬੀ ਬੰਨੀ ਸੰਗ ਕੁੱਟਣੀ ਜਈ ਲਾ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਜਿਉਂ ਮਛੇਰਿਆਂ ਨੇ ਸੀ ਮਛਲੀ ਬਿੰਨੀ ਦਾਣਾ ਪਾਣੀ ਵੀ ਬੰਦ ਕਰ ਇਉਂ ਕਹਿਰ ਸਿੱਟਾਇਆ ਚਿੱਟਾ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਬਣਾਉਣ ਦਾ ਐਲਾਨ ਸੁਣਾਇਆ ਚਿੱਟਾ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਬਣਾਉਣ ਦਾ ਐਲਾਨ ਸੁਣਾਇਆ 
370 ਯਾਤਰੀ ਪਰ ਵੱਡਾ ਸਰਮਾਇਆ ਪੁਰਖਿਆਂ ਨੇ ਵੀ ਅੱਡੀ ਚੋਟੀ ਦਾ ਜੋਰ ਸੀ ਲਾਇਆ ਔਖਾ ਸੀ ਬਈ ਔਖਾ ਸੀ ਪਰ ਫੇਰ ਵੀ ਬਾਬਿਆਂ ਹੀਲਾ ਕੀਤਾ ਕਰ ਜ਼ਮੀਨਾਂ ਗਹਿਣੇ ਤਰ ਮੋਢੇ ਨਾਲ ਮੋਢਾ ਡਾਇਆ ਵੇਖ ਜੋਸ਼ ਭਾਈਆਂ ਦਾ ਸਰਮਾਏ ਨੇ ਸੰਗੀ ਕੁੱਟੀ ਨਸਲਵਾਦ ਦਾ ਪਿੰਜਰਾ ਉੱਥੇ ਜਾਂ ਨਵਾਂ ਸੀ ਬਣਾਇਆ ਰਾਣੀ ਦਾ ਕਾਨੂੰਨ ਸੀ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਕੌਣ ਨਕਾਰੇ ਰਾਣੀ ਦਾ ਕਾਨੂੰਨ ਸੀ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਕੌਣ ਨਕਾਰੇ ਚੋਲੀ ਚੁੱਕ ਕਰਿੰਦਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਬਈ ਕੌਣ ਹਟਾਵੇ ਸਰਮਾਏ ਦਾ ਜ਼ੁਲਮ ਸੀ ਬੜਾ ਕਹਿਰ ਸਿਟਾਇਆ ਬੰਦੂਕ ਸਾਦ ਕੇ ਬੀਹਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਤਾਂ ਸਿਰੇ ਚੜਾਇਆ ਚੁੱਪੀ ਸਾਦ ਜੋ ਸਹਿ ਲਵੇ ਉਹ ਦਾਸ ਕਹਾਵੇ ਚੁੱਪੀ ਸਾਦ ਜੋ ਸਹਿ ਲਵੇ ਉਹ ਦਾਸ ਕਹਾਵੇ ਸਿਰ ਕੱਢ ਆਵਾਜ਼ ਕਰੇ ਤਾਂ ਬਾਗੀ ਕਹਿਲਾਵੇ ਗਦਰੀ ਇਨਕਲਾਬੀਆਂ ਫਿਰ ਬੀੜਾ ਚੁੱਕਿਆ ਪਿੰਜਰੇ ਤੋੜ ਫਰਾਰ ਹੋਣ ਦਾ ਨਾਰਾ ਕੱਢਿਆ ਮੌਤ ਦੇ ਬਦਲੇ ਮੌਤ ਦਾ ਐਲਾਨ ਸੀ ਕੀਤਾ ਮੌਤ ਦੇ ਬਦਲੇ ਮੌਤ ਦਾ ਐਲਾਨ ਸੀ ਕੀਤਾ ਉਸ ਪੰਡੁੱਬੀ ਦੇ ਹਾਦਸੇ ਨੇ ਅੱਖਾਂ ਖੋਲੀਆਂ ਜ਼ੁਲਮ ਜਬਰ ਨਾ ਸਹਾਂਗੇ ਤਕਰੀਰਾਂ ਬੋਲੀਆਂ ਨਸਲਵਾਦ ਦੇ ਅੰਤ ਦੀ ਇਉਂ ਲਹਿਰ ਚਲਾਈ ਇੱਕ ਵੱਡੀ ਜ਼ਿੰਮੇਵਾਰੀ ਮੇਰੇ ਮੋਢਿਆਂ ਪਾਈ ਇੱਕ ਵੱਡੀ ਜ਼ਿੰਮੇਵਾਰੀ ਮੇਰੇ ਮੋਢਿਆਂ ਪਾਈ ਪਿੰਜਰਾ ਤੋੜ ਆਜ਼ਾਦ ਹੋਣ ਦਾ ਮੈਂ ਟੀਚਾ ਬੰਨਿਆ ਮੂੰਹ ਤੋੜ ਜਵਾਬ ਦੇਣ ਦਾ ਕਫਨ ਲੈ ਬੰਨਿਆ ਬੇਇਨਸਾਫੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਸਹਾਂਗੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਸਹਾਂਗੇ ਗਲ ਕੋਟੂ ਸਰਕਾਰਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਹੁਣ ਨਹੀਂ ਡਰਾਂਗੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਡਰਾਂਗੇ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਵਾਹ ਹਾ ਇਟਸ ਅ ਬਿਊਟੀਫੁਲ ਪੋਅਮ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਕੁਸਮ ਆਈ ਥਿੰਕ ਅ ਟ੍ਰਾਂਸਲੇਸ਼ਨ ਇਜ਼ ਵਾਰੈਂਟਡ uh to share with everybody it, it is a, again a call for us to carry uh the message of the past and not let it be buried but to uh keep fighting the good causes and it's left us with a huge responsibility uh, uh on our shoulders from that we carry from the messengers of the komagatamru onwards uh so thank you for that beautiful poem kusum i hope this is not a gilded cage as you have mentioned but that we have freedoms and that we value those freedoms in canada and we do something about them uh, a beautiful fitting poem at the end of our uh, our session and as you can see it is close to 5 o'clock so we are fin- finishing on time as well um i, I truly want to thank you for joining us on this online launch uh since we cannot be at the site and uh, can't enjoy each other's company i want to say how much we appreciate the people on the panel as well as everybody on the side that i saw has attended from far and wide and lending support to this worthy cause uh, as uh, sukhi and i were talking earlier it's it's wonderful that we're still talking about the kumagatamru but at the same time it's sad that we're still talking about it that we're still fighting the fight against uh, racism and injustice in our societies uh, but i know everybody around here and everyone in the room are um, you know warriors and will continue the good fight and will carry the messages in their places of influence and their seats of power as well as positions of influence uh with on that note i want to thank you on behalf of cause of the one society in abbotsford uh for coming together uh and being with us today and i hope that we will see you at the uh gurdwara one day and we can enjoy the site itself um we thank you again for all of you for staying with us for one hour uh truly appreciative uh thank you raj thank you mike thank you mayor bron thank you mp bradvis Tarek, thank you. Thank you, Duncan, Sukhi, Kusum, Sharn, and Kanchan, who has stayed quiet and uh, behind the scenes helping us uh, maneuver the technology. And thank you all the 55 to 65 participants who joined us in between. I was remiss, Mayor Braun, in not mentioning Sandy Blue earlier. And please let her know that I did recognize that she had attended along with the other counselors. It was my mistake that I did not add her to the list of thank yous. Um, so from all of us at the South Asian Studies Institute, happy Vesakhi. Uh, enjoy the spring. Enjoy the good weather. Uh, Sikh Heritage Month, uh, a time to remember our heritage and to... Um, you know also uh, celebrate and appreciate everything we have done and everyone has done shoulder to shoulder and let's make our communities uh, more beautiful better places to live and not be afraid to call it what it is and to um support each other in our good fights um thank you again have a good night thank you we will send you the catalogs by the way
Ah, thank you, Duncan, for staying with us and at the last minute for coming forward. I appreciate it very much. And thank you to everyone who chatted and who left notes on the side. And uh, it's, it's very fulfilling to have been here today. Very emotional for me uh, as, as well, uh, but very fulfilling that everybody came together and that we have something that is gonna outlive us, that the, the permanent exhibit is going to be beyond our time and that the next generations won't forget this story. Uh, beautifully done, Ria and uh, Vicky did an amazing job. Of course, some amazing translations, every word in it is the ethos and the emotion of the English word as well. You know, it had to have that kind of expertise uh, to be able to tell that story. Uh, so just uh, beautiful messages uh, from everyone around the chat. And thank you, Dunk. Come on, Kanchan, come on, let's see you. I know Sharn is gone, but <laughs> there you are. So it's under our belt. You have another one tomorrow and uh, we shall see you at seven. Uh, you're muted. You're muted, Kanchan. So uh, around seven o'clock, before seven. We'll see you before seven. Yeah. Uh, but looking forward to it. And of course, uh, continued solidarity and continued work that we're going to do with it, each other. This is only the beginning. This mm -hmm. is just the start. Yes, Kusum? So I want to, uh, so same Zoom link will work tomorrow or we, uh, we will receive a separate link? A separate link. Uh, so, uh, but I registered once, so you're going to send me tomorrow. You'll get another um, in your email. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Beautiful messages from everybody on the side uh, saying great. Uh, yeah. Anissa, Anissa, who is one of our funders saying she'll come and have a look. So I think, you know, this is uh, Duncan and Kanchan. I think we have to plan in the fall uh, when <laughs> this is, you know, when things open up. Uh, to still have a gathering, whether it's this formal or not, doesn't have to be, but perhaps it's just a gathering to uh, honor uh, and pay tribute uh, to that journey. Uh, perhaps we need to do something in the fall and we'll invite people to that as well. Whoever wants to come can come. But I was so impressed by, you know, the people on the side from all over the province and all across mm -hmm. Canada. So that's the best part of doing Zoom as well. <laughs> One of the good parts. We had almost 60 people, not bad, right? Yeah, not bad at all. And somebody was here from University of Davis. Uh, so yeah, we can end and uh, see you tomorrow. Bye. -bye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Kanchan. Hi. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank so you. Okay.